Representative Cotham, taking uh, the podium there. Right now, you're looking at House Speaker Tim Moore there addressing the crowd. So let's go ahead and listen in live. Bipartisan members who would work with us a great deal. Dan probably can speak to that when he comes up as well. But it's, it was amazing to me that in the, you know, in the last few weeks, uh, the conversations that, that I had with Representative Cotham, it did seem that she, like so many, uh, we're, we're seeing that uh, perhaps uh, she didn't have as much of a home in her former party as, as she did. One of the things that we pride ourselves on as Republicans is that we always tell our caucus members, vote your conscience, <coughs> vote your district, and then vote with your caucus. That's a, that's a hallmark we have. And you can see that regularly. We, we had a vote, uh, what, three weeks ago on the Medicaid bill where our caucus was, you know, split. But you know what? We had our vote. Everybody had their piece. And we moved on. Nobody attacked each other in the media. Nobody went after each other. We understand that having a big tent with ideas across the spectrum is what makes not just a party healthy, but it's what makes governing effective. Because North Carolina is that way. And the new modern face of the Republican Party is one that represents the values and the views of most of North Carolina. So in the last few weeks, as I was talking with Representative Cotham, I got a sense that she was uh, unhappy, felt like she maybe was having to vote against her conscience in a lot of ways. Uh, and so, you know, told her that we'd love to have you. And by the way, she's not the only Democrat that we've had great conversations with. And because I think a lot of folks, you just see it's a national move where folks realize that, um, that, that there's this wokeness, whatever you want to call it, has pervaded in a lot of ways, and there are a lot of folks on the other side of the aisle, I think, who are frustrated within their own party. But knowing Representative Cotham, knowing her commitment to, to Mecklenburg County and to North Carolina, she put, she put policy over politics. Uh, she's been very principled. And so when she expressed an interest in, in talking with us, of course, I said yes. And we are honored today to have with us our newest member of the Republican Caucus, uh, Representative Tricia Cotham. Tricia, thank you. Good morning, and thank you for being here. I am Trisha Cotham. I am a single mom of two amazing sons, a teacher, a small business owner, a woman with strong faith, a national championship basketball coach, and a public servant. Today, I add Republican to that list. I have decided to change my party affiliation joining the Republican Party and have been welcomed with open arms by my colleagues. And I'm glad to call you all my colleagues. As long as I have been a Democrat, the Democrats have tried to be a big tent. But this now where we are, modern day Democratic Party, has become unrecognizable to me and to so many others throughout this state and this country. The party wants to villainize anyone who has free thought, free judgment, has solutions, who wants to get to work to better our state, not just sit in a meeting and have a workshop after a workshop, but really work with individuals to get things done, because that's what real public servants do. If you don't do exactly, what the Democrats want you to do, they will try to bully you. They will try to cast you aside. I saw that when I first filed for office and was told, why didn't you ask for our permission? I didn't think I needed to do that as a female. And quite frankly, I was offended. But when I came back to this legislature, I knew times were different and things had changed. I also knew that I was different. I have been through a lot in life, and so I am just different too, and I'm proud of that. It became very clear to me early on in January 
that you better vote in line with everything Governor Cooper tells you to do, from signing on to bills, to he wanted to pick your seat on the House floor, to your committee requests, all of this sense of control. I will not be controlled by anyone. I have always been a free thinker, a woman of faith, a person of independent judgment, and of common sense. I have always tried to work across the aisle from day one, and I'm proud of that work because that means we are working together as statesmen and stateswomen. Unfortunately, that is talk in the Democratic Party that that's a good thing, but there is little action when it comes to that. And if I do that, I was considered a traitor, I was told, a spy. Please don't come to caucus. You'll tell everything we know. That is a terrible mentality, and that's just wrong of what's happening in politics. I've suffered many attacks since I've been up here from Democrats in the party, from blasting me on Twitter to calling me names, to going after my family, going after my children. That is wrong. And I will not stand for that. I will not be bullied by them and I will protect my children and my family. <laughs> One of the absolute worst moments, which was a deal breaker, a, a turning point for me, was when I was criticized for using the American flag and the praying hands emoji on all my social media platforms, and even on the back of different vehicles that I have. I really could not believe that was the conversation that was happening at that time. And I was deeply offended. Um, I am proud to be an American. I am proud of our country. I am proud of the men and women in my family who have served. To say that that is wrong and not to be able to show off a flag because the others hijack it for something else. Why are we at this place in politics? That is really unacceptable and needs to change. I want to be a part of that change agent for the greater good of our state, for the greater good of all the public servants behind me and all back there. I firmly believe that it is my responsibility as a legislator to learn everything I can, to ask questions, to hear perspectives, before deciding how to vote. When did Democrats become so afraid of independent thought? Because they're definitely not encouraging it at all. Perhaps they don't like what they can't control. It became very clear to me this was about control on day one at the legislature. They picked the wrong chick for that. <laughs> they have pushed me out. They have made it very clear from the day I filed back in March of last year that they did not want me and tried to do everything they could to defeat me. They have lied on me. Women in the House caucus have said vicious and started vicious rumors that are very hypocritical of other stances that they make, attacking me on Twitter, in person to my face, attacking my mother, and saying something to my boys. That is wrong and hypocritical. Some have sent threatening messages to me, interest groups and lobbying groups that are aligned with the Democrat Party have directly sent messages to my 12-year-old son. And that needs to stop. And it's not just been one time. One of the worst moments was when I took my little boy to Target. And, you know, you go to Target, it inspires you. You see what you might need to buy. You never know. 
And so we were exploring different things, looking at RC cars and Nerf guns. And out of nowhere, a woman came, and she cussed me out, up and down, screaming at me, trying to remain composure in that moment, but most importantly, protecting my son, my baby. And for him to have to witness that and see how a grown woman would act and try to even explain it was wrong. But children teach us the best lessons, and they really help us in moments like this. Because my son used my iPad and wrote me the sweetest note. I don't even know how to write notes on my iPad. <laughs> I'm sure he can teach me. But just encouraging me, he recognized this and said how wrong it was. Those are just a few events. Go on Twitter right now. See all the threats against me. See the hypocrisy. See the, the attack lines inciting, encouraging violence on me. That's what's happening. It's all over right now. So they can keep bullying me. People say, does it bother you? It bothers me that they're hypocritical. Yes. This is not the place for in politics. This doesn't help women in politics because they have a tendency even though they say they're the party of women, they certainly will slice and dice you in a second with malicious, vicious, untrue rumors and do not celebrate your success. And these women behind me from day one, we have become very close. These are my girls, as I like to say, but I am lucky now to be a part of a real group of men and women who believe in me. I'm not a politician. I'm no longer a Democrat. But I remain a public servant. That is what I am called to do. The party that best represents me and my principles and what's best for North Carolina is the Republican Party. It's an honor to be here today. I thank you all so very much. Glad to be on the team. Next, next we'll hear from Congressman Bishop. Dan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, sorry, my appearance somewhat detracted. All right, uh, Congressman Dan Bishop there stepping up to the mic. We heard from Speaker of the House uh, Tim Moore. Of course, the the... The main uh, item there was mm -hmm. Representative uh, Tricia Contha making her switch uh, official from Democrat over to the Republican side, saying that she had been uh, bullied uh, for not staying in the line that she felt the Democrats wanted her to stay in. And she said, listen, I'm an independent woman. I won't be controlled by anyone. This is the decision that I'm now making. I'm switching parties. All right. And she was a career Democrat, but she did have uh, a brief stint away from the state house. And she says when she came back, she didn't recognize the Democrat Party that she had left, said that they had a order that you have to vote in line, you have to stick with Governor Cooper. And if you don't fall in line, then, you know, you're going to be subject to the bullying that she talked about. She said the sticking point was the prayer hands emoji, the American flag emoji mm -hmm. that she uses in her tweets and on her car and that she got bullying from that. Uh, but as we see a historic shift there in the state house, because as we talked about, it gives them the supermajority, which is the ability to override any of Governor Cooper's veto. So the fallout from this is something we're going to have to continue to watch through the session. Yeah, we'll continue to watch throughout the day. I'm sure we'll be mm -hmm. hearing from both sides, the Democrats and the Republicans, on the switch with Tricia Cotham.